This is Girl Stop Playing, a weekly show that empowers black women to stop playing with their potential so they can live a life that they love. I'm Coriel, your favorite homegirl, and I'm on a mission to help black women make the money and get the honey. You can have it all as long as you're willing to work. Welcome back to another episode of the Girl Stop Playing podcast. It's your favorite homegirl, Coriel, here to encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. You already know that I believe you can make the money and you can get the honey. You can have it all as long as you are willing to work. And today I have a special working woman in the studio. We have Coach Helen here on Girl Stop Playing. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. I'm so excited we were finally able to do this. I know. It's been forever. I always like to, like, as I'm preparing for these conversations, I always try to think back to, like, where I came in contact with my guest. And I know that we first met, I think I know this, that we first met at an event in, like, 2019, uh, 20, I feel like I had just had my baby. It so this had to be 20, was it 2021? I know the event. It was the, the social, white. Yeah, yeah the uh-huh. all white. We had all, all white. white. Yep. I don't know when it was though. I think you don't it was know like twenty nineteen. Yeah, I think it was. I don't know. Either way, it was like couple, it was like right before the pandemic. It was right. You had just opened up your Zen bar. Yes. So what year was that? So I had started building it twenty nineteen. So I okay. opened it officially twenty twenty one. Got you. Okay. 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 So So I don't know if I was building or. I think it was twenty twenty one because I think I have just had my first baby and okay. I was like, ooh. Because I came to the Zen bar after I had my second baby. Okay, so let's bring yes, the people. Boom. Let's bring the people up. Okay. Coach Helen, tell the people who you are, and then I'll get into all of the fabulous things. Okay, great. So I am Coach Helen, also known as Sacred Secret, and I am your spiritual and financial business coach. I'm all about understanding how to like blend both worlds so that you can create the life that you truly deserve. I love that you are bringing finances into the spiritual conversation because it's usually very separate, mm-hmm. and it's usually... I think it's kept that way intentionally because if you really realize that you need both of them and you try to you figure out how to work them together, then you're exactly. basically unstoppable. Exactly. And that's what they want to Exactly. Avoid. It's like the missing link. People be, I feel like, taking a lot of finance classes, coaching classes, but they haven't done the personal development. They haven't done the spiritual work to even believe in themselves or even really know what they can do. So they're always getting all this knowledge, but it's like, it's not it's not going to work if you don't first do the personal development the spirituality get clear with who you are who you want to be not what others have programmed you to think that you're supposed to be and then it's so much just easier with clarity mm-hmm. to be able to reach financial freedom how much control over who you are do you actually have because we were just talking about astrology and your signs and how certain attributes you know are in you because of how you pre- all of the things how much control do you actually have of who you are if you were born as right so you know it's funny my astrologist Ra'aku shout out to him um, he will argue this with me all the time because he does not believe in manifestation he is like it is bull crap is what he'll tell you because everything is written in your chart already like he will argue with me he'll go back and forth on my days and prove to me things by looking at my chart and asking me things like, oh, did you experience this this day, da 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 and I'll be like, yeah. And he'll be like, oh, okay, so how did you manifest that when it was already written in your chart, mm. you know? So sometimes I, I've, it's an interesting battle. What I do believe is a lot of things are written, everything's written, but we still have a form of controlling the way we react and the way we, um, like see things in this realm right because it's all about perspective everything is perspective some people are so programmed with a negative perspective that they're not even able to access the frequency of like abundance because it's just they're always on a low frequency Mm -hmm. you know but if they would just allow themselves to be on a higher frequency what's written in the chart can have a different result in the sense of how you experience it So I want to pause on the fact that you have an astrologer because this is such a foreign taboo uh, conversation for the black community specifically. However, 
Um, I mean, I was reading and research. I'm all into this stuff. I am nowhere near where you are, okay? But I am dibbling and dabbling and learning a little That's bit, you right? Start with, girl. Just starting. Yeah. But one of the things that I came across was with the black community, we are all like, that's woo woo. Like, I'm not, you're gonna go to hell if you got crystals, if you're doing sage, if you're doing any of the things. We think that that is just very anti how we were raised. Yeah. Wealthy people, not rich, but wealthy people have astrologers. Yep. They're the people who know numerology. They're the people who know what's going on in this season and whether we're in an eclipse. Or, like they know, they are Literally. planning their Everything. lives based on the moon and the stars where we think, oh, you're crazy Literally. if you subscribe to that. So tell us what astrology actually is. Well, I just want to touch on something you said okay. first. Okay, so I really believe that we've been programmed like that purposely, especially in the black community. There has been... You know, and I, I, I love God. I believe in God. All of you know, but there has been a real programming on us with religion and programming of certain religions and beliefs that make us have taken us away from what we actually know, which is what our ancestors did. Our ancestors studied astrology before we had the European calendar, the Gregorian calendar. We studied the stars. We studied the moons. That's how we knew what was going on. We studied the crops. We studied the seasons. This is how our ancestors actually knew what was going on. You know, even the the woman, we are connected to the moon. We have a 28-day cycle that is literally in sync with the, the phases of the moon. So we can know when it's a new month just by following our own calendar, you know, and, and it's all connected. It's just all connected. Like, it's so crazy. So, yes, they have completely programmed our people to think it's so taboo, mm -hmm. to think it's witchcraft, to stay away from it, all this stuff. Wow, in reality, everything that we do in this world is aligned to the cosmos. Even if we go to 4th of July, for instance, 4th of July is a placement with Sirius star moon where we're in, a portal is open. It's a very powerful portal where we should actually be setting our intentions, manifesting, programming, doing things of this nature. But they have programmed us to party on this day. They have programmed us to be intoxicated in a space of where you would never tap into that energy mm -hmm. or really take advantage of this portal, you know? Same with New Year's. All these days are not coincidence. Mm -hmm. Like, even April Fool's, even today, I was telling you, today's the real New Year's, mm -hmm. you know? They've programmed us and brainwashed to think that New Year's is in the winter, which is the dark days. This is the cold days. This is a time of hibernation. Our ancestors would take these days to literally be in hibernation, focus on the crops, focus on what they're going to grow when the the new year comes in March for the spring equinox. That's when everything blossoms. That's mm -hmm. when the animals come out. That's when the whole nature just starts to blossom. Everything comes to life. This is the reaper. We are, it's like insanity. It's like the things that we are taught. Well, not until you realize the truth. Because when you're in the deep slumber, you don't realize that you sleep, right? At all. But it makes sense if you really think about it. Yeah. So many things that we have been taught do not logically, that it it's not logically sound. No. So even what you mentioned about women having a cycle, a 28-day cycle, I, I don't know about you, I was never once taught. Never. That there was any correlation between my menstrual cycle and the moon cycle. That Those words were never mentioned in the same sentence for my entire life. Never. Why would that be the case? I think, again, it's a part of programming us to make us um, disconnect from how connected we are to nature, to creator, to mm -hmm. God. Because if we know our true power, then if we really start to study ourselves and even knowing our roots, because history is rewritten. Every, every day of the week, history is rewritten, right? Exactly. So for our generation, unless we start doing the digging, we will believe that the Asians created, Asians and Indians have created everything. Like, we will just never even reach back or tap into our roots and realize that it was us. Exactly. That we are the creators, that we are the originators. We have been brainwashed to believe that if you believe in that, you're going to go to hell. It's witchcraft. You, you know, all of the things that the are in us. Yeah, the programming is deep. Mm -hmm. It goes so deep, sis. And when you really think about it, like they have, um, see, the, the person who hides the truth from you will teach you to look over here, 
but the whole time they're over here in the truth. They're in your truth, you know? So when they tell you that, you know, even if you go to Egypt now, so many things they've recreated, they've, like, planted different people and spaces to just manipulate you and make rewrite you think. History. Exactly, to, to rewrite history. To remove you so that you don't know that you are the God, so that you don't know that you are the creator, so that you don't know that this is your earth. It's your universe. Mm. It's your universe. Everybody's living their own universe, and that's the that's the journey. It's your hero story. We all have our own hero story that we have to live. But society has programmed us to be so distracted so distracted with work, bills, um, news, drama, race wars, just so many things always going on that you're never able to actually connect to yourself mm -hmm. or creator, nature. The nature is the number one thing, you know, nature is us. See, we always hear about this masculine God, right? But we always forget that Mother Nature is all around us. We live in Mother Nature. So you cannot honor one without the other. It's just impossible. You have to be in tune with Mother and Father. I saw a post. I should have looked this up. Well, I didn't know I was going to end up talking about this. But <laughs> a man was talking about the fact that he healed himself from cancer through nature. Yep. I mean, he was literally, like, hugging trees. And from the outside looking in, you look crazy, sir. But we're the real crazy ones that will run and go get chemo, that will run and go take these pills, that will run and go do all of these things versus what is natural right in nature yep. here for us. Yeah. We will look at that man and say that he has literally lost his mind. Like, yeah. why would you be doing that? But he, it worked. He healed yeah. himself. Yeah, there's studies on that. That makes me wonder what else they are hiding from us out in nature. Everything. Everything. That's why they're t they're taking away our trees. They're doing all this stuff. There's actually a study. I studied this in Japan, um, where at one point when uh, technology had started in Japan, the governor, the the government at that time, because they don't have like presidents like us, it's different. But they were very concerned because all of their people started getting cancer, and they were mm. like, okay, how do we stop this with our, our our people? We don't want them to be so much on these gadgets where they're because they care about their people in other countries honestly they do so they started doing a study on um, nature and going into the trees and how it could actually help so they started putting people in the trees certain amount of days just literally just being in the trees in the nature and it um, it took away the cancer it like they they were able to show that just by being in these trees because there's this I, I don't know the word right now I don't want to say it but there's certain energy chemicals that come off the tree that mm. literally, if we breathe it in, it heals us. So even them cutting down all our trees, building up all the city, you know, it, it's a part of making us sick. It's a part crazy. of all of the big pharmacy program, which is keeping you sick. You know, doctors are not trained to heal us. Doctors are trained to treat treat us the problem mm -hmm. exactly yep. and and in those treatments they're never trained to worry about okay what will this treatment cause what will if this person has this thing what will this cause mm -hmm. they don't they don't think about that and even more for our people most treatments and studies are studied are on done on caucasian people so a lot of it is not even good for our body mm -hmm. like we're not supposed to drink milk we grew up learning Oh, drink milk for your bones, blah, blah, But no, that's not good for our bones. Girl, when I tell you, it had to be at least five times that my son's teacher asked me, you sure he can't have so he, I mean, when I said, I literally, at the new school, I said he had an allergy. I made the mistake that's at the first gotta school. Do. You got to say it's an allergy or they will play in your face. But yeah. at the first school, I just said, no, he doesn't, we don't do dairy. But it was, well, can he have macaroni or can he have this? It was just this whole conversation, a consistent conversation, because you just do not understand why I do not want my child no. to drink dairy, even though I've done all my research. I know all of these things, the asthma, just all of these things They'll that come from the crazy. mucus buildup, all of these things that come from drinking cow's milk that I have researched. But because of the culture that we live in, you're going to question me and probably snuck my kids some cheese. I just don't know about it. But the way that she was constantly asking yeah. me, you sure, you sure, you sure? And it's a cultural thing. It's, yep. 
Same with vaccinations. Same with, I mean, it's a laundry list of things that we can name that if you want to do things that are outside of the norm, you are Considered demonized. Or, yeah. or, yeah, you're looked at like you're crazy when in reality your sickness is big business. It's okay? big business. It is. It's big so when business. it comes to reversing or combating, you know, what we're taught, if we can't go out and hug trees, <laughs> yeah. what are some things that we can do like on a daily basis at home yeah. to reconnect with ourselves? It might not be nature, but how can we reconnect with ourselves at least? Well, definitely forms of meditation are great things. Um, what do you mean forms? Like different kinds of meditation? There's definitely different kinds of meditation. I know a lot of people, when they think of meditation, they just think of like, hmm, mm -hmm. you know, let me sit down. But honestly... So I, when I went to um, Thailand, I was in the temple and the monk had talked to me about this and he was like, you know, the human, the normal human brain, we have monkey brain, that's what he called it. We have monkey brain. So it's very hard for most of us to just start with sitting down and just meditating mm -hmm. because our mind is always racing. We have, so, it, like, you're gonna think about, oh my God, did I turn the oven on? I gotta pick my kid up, oh my God. Like you can never stop thinking, right? So sometimes it's even just breath work. Sometimes it's just taking a moment to just, okay, let me just take deep, deep breaths in and out right now for a good 30 seconds. And in those deep breaths, taking the time to recite my affirmation, keep my brain busy. So you don't allow space for any thoughts to come in. Because if you're concentrating on breathing and you're concentrating on affirmations, no thoughts can creep in in those mm. spaces. You know what I mean? So creating techniques small techniques that can help you just throughout the day if you feel triggered okay in and out everything is okay all is in my you know just repeating these affirmations will really help you throughout the day mm -hmm. and more importantly just to start the whole reprogramming of everything we have to understand it's the subconscious it's the subconscious mind right so when we go into how we've been programmed from our, our parents, school, teachers, all of these societies, we can also program our own subconscious mind. So I personally, I go to sleep every night. I'm listening to affirmations. Um, I listen to Bible verses when I go to sleep. I listen, I'm always listening to something that I want programmed in my mind because those are, those are space and time where you can use to reprogram, you know? Like, so just being intentional with things like that, the music you listen to. I don't even listen. I couldn't even tell you none of the new artists. Girl, while you're sitting here saying that, all that I'm thinking about is sexy red lyrics. Like, that's all that's going through my head. Because last time I heard the sexy red song on the radio, I was just like, oh my God, I cannot believe the words that I'm hearing. Not that our music was any better, I'm not saying that, but I just can't believe the words that I'm hearing. So to your point, not only is it important for us, but our kids are sitting around with these things in the background. It might not even be that they're paying attention, but that background noise becomes your inner thoughts. Absolutely, absolutely. Like when my son was your child's age, um, I always rode around with very intentional things, personal development. Mm -hmm. Me and my son, when we get up on the way to school, he's listening to personal development. He, I'm already programming him. That was going to be my next question is we are now evolving. Like the millennials, we're doing our shit. Like we yeah. are getting our shit together. No questions asked. We're not going to do what y'all want us to do. We're going to figure it out for ourselves. Period. And we're raising our kids much better you know, our parents did what they did. But we're raising our kids, yes. I think, in a much better way. So when we learn something new, it's so important for us to make sure we're sharing it with our kids. Absolutely. How are you incorporating this with your son? Yeah, I do everything with my son. I mean, I'm definitely... I, I had my son, I guess you could say, kind of young. I had him around 22. So he's 15 now. So we're, like, very close. That is so unbelievable. Yeah. I, I made you show me a picture of him I when know. you told me that before. I'm like, girl, show me this kid because I don't believe it. And I need to see you with him when he was a little baby because yeah. where yeah so that that was i'm grateful for that journey you know it helped it helped me evolve into who i was becoming a mother definitely actually becoming a mother was a big part of the trigger of me wanting to learn so much more because I started questioning if I was teaching my son the right things. Like, am I teaching this, my son the right way to pray? Am I teaching the right name? Am mm. I, or am I just continuing on, passing on these traditions that I don't really know where they came from? So, like, that was what actually got me on my t like rabbit hole of conspiracy theory and just studying knowledge and religions and different cultures and all of that stuff. So that triggered a lot, and. 
as I learned, I taught my son, and I always tell my son that I'm learning every day. Even now, I'm always like, son, I don't know everything. Every day I'm learning. But every day I learn something, I'm going to share what I learn and allow you to make your own perspective. Because I'm also very careful on trying not to be a narcissist parent. Because I don't want to push my views on him either, but also give him a balanced... Um, perspective because mm -hmm. he's going to let him decide. Yeah, because he's going to hear what he hears at school. He's going to hear what he hears on social media, things like that. But at least if he sees what I believe in and what I hear, and then it's in the back of his head, and it'll be there. I, I believe that it'll be a foundation mm -hmm. for him, you know? So yeah, just incorporate in everything, girl. He's at my events, he's at the store. You know, I, we do affirmations, new moon. He's very familiar with the new moon, the full moon. Like, I'm like, let's boom. get into it. Let's talk about it because I am not. I am new to the moon rituals, the full yeah. moon, the new moon. I still have to Google every time. I'm like, okay, it's a new moon. What do I do on this one? Okay, I release. Okay, what do I do? So I am, again, baby step. I'm baby yes. stepping my way in. Okay. But what is, I guess, the, not the premise. Like, what are we supposed to do? What's the purpose? Like, what's supposed to happen on the new moon and the full moon? What's the significance? Okay, so basically... The new moon is, it represents like a void. It's when the moon goes completely black. So that is also the reset of a cycle. So like when our ancestors would study the moon to know what month or what days it was, um, when we come in into the black moon, that lets you know that we're starting a new month. This is a new cycle, right? So then once it goes into its cycle, you'll watch your phases. That's how they would mark things like, oh, we're at a quarter phase, we're at a half phase, boom, now we're in the middle of the month. You know, so mm -hmm. this would literally mark it for them. But so the new moon specifically is all about new beginnings, new intentions. So it's the time when you want to get clear on what you want to happen in this next cycle. So your next 28 day cycle, you would, um, for me, I always do a spiritual bath during the new moon because it's like my rebirth. This Tell is, the people what a spiritual bath is. Okay, so a spiritual bath is, um, like I said, it's like a rebirth. It's like your baptism because there's never... I believe that you can baptize yourself as many times as you want. And it's not always done just by like a pastor or in church. You you can have this with yourself, with the creator and going within, you know. So I'm very intentional with the spirit. I do have a YouTube video in my um, on my link in my bio. I'll drop all that later. But um, just on how to do a spiritual bath, what herbs you can use. Because you can use different herbs based on your intention, what you're trying to work on. If you're working on money, love, um, negativity, removing... Ne There's different herbs for everything. Mm -hmm. But basically with the spiritual bath, you would set your intentions. You're going to put your herbs in your bath. Maybe flowers, maybe fruit. Whatever whatever is going to make your goddess bath just amazing, right? Like even back in the day, Cleopatra used to do this. Like she would have uh, goddess baths with goat milk milk and orange and roses and things like this it's the same thing mm -hmm. we have to cherish ourselves and our bodies and constantly um, going through our rebirth our recycle with nature right so the new moon always spiritual bath set your intentions um, and just getting clear for the next cycle um, the full moon is once you've completed the cycle. Mm -hmm. So the cycle is complete now. We're in the full moon. Now we're going to study the things that we wanted to bring to fruition during that new moon. We're going to see what worked for us, what didn't. What do we need to let go? What is not working for us? What is not serving us good in our purpose? And what do we need to release and remove from our, for our next cycle that's about to start? Got you. Yeah. And you are writing intentions and so releasing? So on full moons, I do my releases. So I don't set intentions. I do releases. So during the full moon, I might cleanse out my house. I might throw a bunch of old clothes out. I might, um, I'll, I will write out the things that I feel like no longer serve me. Um, I like to usually uh, incorporate the element of fire with that. So I'll usually do this outside under the full moon, light it up, or I might read it prior and give it to the universe. Like I will be like, okay, I release this universe. I ask you to take this and just we're done. 
you know, and a new cycle. <laughs> you can say that without having to burn it, or you still got to burn it? Girl, I'd be so scared trying you to burn my little You don't have to burn paper. it. <laughs> you okay. don't have to burn it. You can okay. absolutely I just. Will study but I fire. do recommend, if you're not going to burn it, I recommend that you bury it into the earth. Okay. Because the whole point is that we want to give it back to Mother Earth. Okay. You know, so if we keep the paper and you're then it's still forming it. it, yeah. And we don't want to just put it in the trash or anywhere where it can still be lingering on. So I always say either bury it in your in the earth or you could also put it in the ocean if you have access to that or something like Got that. You. Mm -hmm. Girl, okay, so y'all gonna have to go watch the video because I'm sure it gets way deeper than that. So we're meditating. Yes. We're doing our moon rituals. Yes. What else should we be doing? We're getting our yoni steams. Let's, can we talk about the yoni steaming? Can Ooh. we talk about the Zen bar now? Yes, yes. So you have this amazing store. Yes. It's more than a store. It's like Absolutely. a juice bar, a spa, a community center. It's all of it's the things. Everything. Literally right across the street from the first property I ever bought. I told you I used to you live in that me. building. You used to live in that right building. Right there. So it's everything for me. Um, my favorite smoothie. Y'all have, I just love it all. So when you come <laughs> into her spot, y'all, she has you pull a card. Yes. Based on the card that you pull, it, it's correlated to a smoothie. Chakra. A, a chakra, yes. and it's correlated to a smoothie. Yes. So there's chakra cards. Uh -huh. um, so the Wellness Center, I was very intentional with creating this space because I realized that we do need to reprogram a lot of our people. So even my location, everything is very intentional with that. Um, and the chakra cards. It's in the hood. That's yeah. what, the location we, we is in the it's hood, blackity yeah. black where it needs to be. Absolutely. And that is where all of the greatness is. Period. Because Honestly. you know what? They're always putting poison in those areas. Yep. We don't have nothing but like fast food. Popeyes, Family liquor Dollar, store. Liquor yeah. Store. It's nothing nutrition in our area. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us to um, teach our people this, you know. So that was the download I was given on that. So I did put it there. And then with the smoothies, I was given a complete download about the chakras and how I needed to teach about the chakras with the smoothies. So what I did was I incorporated, uh, which took me forever, by the way. I worked hard on these recipes. Almost, almost a year They're and a good. half. Yeah, because I really studied the herbs that help actually activate each chakra mm. and I um, incorporated it into each recipe so what we do now where people come in is they can decide how they want to feel or what energy they're working with and then they'll pick a chakra card and once they they'll they'll read it and if that feels in alignment if it feels good which it always does it always does honestly and then um yeah we match it with the smoothie that goes with that so i know your favorite is the rooted yes, yes so. i don't even pull in the card no more i'm like you know which one i want now yes. i love it yeah so i love that because first of all we have an energy for every day of the week and um, a lot of people do not know that we have these chakra systems in us and that how each part is associated to a different emotion a different energy a different thing that helps activate right mm -hmm. so again this is again just reprogram ourselves to understand our cells and our body and the way they all work together and how we can actually use all of that to create the life that we want because we've been so just brainwashed mm -hmm. we don't realize how they're all correlated yep. you know so yeah we got the chakra smoothies um, it's really like you said it's a holistic wellness center we do uh spa services we have the yoni steams talk let's talk about the yoni steams okay so that is what i came to experience yes. it was maybe a month after i had my second son i have done yoni steaming in the past yes but i know that you can do yoni steams for different Reasons. Reason. So talk about like what a yoni steam is and then some of the reasons people should yes. do it. Yes. So a yoni steam, it's an ancient remedy. It actually comes from ancient Africa and Asia. We've been using it for decades, way before. I, they didn't call it yoni steams, of course, back mm -hmm. then, because yoni, I don't know when that started. But um, it's a vaginal steam. It's kind of like a facial for your womb. Um, we use it specifically in Africa when women have pregnancy or after they're done, like after they give birth, it's a good thing to use to help uh, cleanse the womb space. Also after your period, before your period, if you're having bacteria, um, like just infections or yeast, a lot of things, you can use this to help cleanse the womb space, which is very important because honestly, just taking a shower isn't really going to clean up in your womb space, mm -hmm. you know? So we incorporate these herbs. We take different herbs like red clover, um, mugswort, mother, like there's all types of different herbs we use depending on um, what somebody wants to work on. Mm -hmm. And when somebody comes in, they'll fill out a form. We'll see what we're working on. And then we 
create a special blend for them and they come in and you sit on these beautiful custom chairs that I created that actually I have uh, crystals mm -hmm. in the chair so when they're sitting on the chair they're also just charging their womb space and very their whole intentional. body very intentional um, and what makes us also very different than anywhere else you go because most people do have like yoni seams but we incorporate the sound bowl healing with it as well so we're just activating that vibration that frequency you just reminded me that I have done a sound bowl I sat yes, here did. last week and talked to somebody about sound bowl I'm like I'm so into it, I want to try it and I have actually done it you did girl you did girl I did. you did okay we got to talk about sound bowl too okay but so go ahead tell tell the people how you liked it I loved my experience as I said I have done Yoni steam before but not like what you did which is what I haven't done anything like what you do. Even Thank the you. juice bar, like everything that you do is so intentional. Um, and that's what I love the most about it. So what I, I don't know the girl's name. Um, was there, I think but it was she was Tayani. amazing. She I think it was, was amazing. Yeah. So even down to the people who you have yes. representing you in there, you can tell that it's very, nothing is thrown together inside of the Zen bar. Um, but I loved the way that it was custom. So I filled out the sheet and she literally talked through it with me yes. and then was like, okay, I'll be back. It yes. wasn't like I just went and got something off the shelf and here, this is for you. So yes. I love that it was customized for me. Um, I was there during a sensitive time. So I loved that it was just me in the room. That was literally probably like the first postpartum thing that mm -hmm. I had done like mm -hmm. leaving to be alone yeah so to sit there it was like a whole therapeutic yes. like experience I got yes. the room to myself I'm sitting on this beautiful chair the girl was just amazing she came in and did the um sound bowl so I loved it that five makes stars me so happy I loved it two thumbs up y'all yeah. definitely gotta go yes. um, check them out come check out the Zen bar but yoni steaming is just one of the things yeah it's just one of the things so we also have foot detoxes mm -hmm. which is uh and again it's an eight this comes from Asia it's a machine that actually uh works to take out all your negative ions out of your body so a lot of times we don't realize that a lot of the food that we eat especially the like processed food and things like that has a lot of aluminum and metals in it and even the air that we breathe now because they're always spraying chemtrails and all this shower stuff. water your, your faucet water the shower yes so much stuff has metals in it so the foot detox helps with pulling those metals and toxins out of our body. It's really good with um, helping with inflammation, things of that nature. So we also offer those. We offer um, facials. We have amazing facials and we do massages and we also do Reiki and energy work. Okay. Yeah, so that's like a chakra alignment where you can come in and uh, the pr practitioner will see if you have any blockages going on in your body and they will help you like with realigning those. So do y'all do sound bowl by itself? Yeah, we do. Um, but it's I have different practitioners Okay. So, well, let me say that if you want to just come in and do a sound bowl session, you can get it done because we can do anything you want to do at the Zen Bar. <laughs> you just have to book in advance. Yes. So, so let's say that because you can't just walk in yes. and say, "Hey, I want to get it." Or can you walk in and say, "I want to get a yoni steam?" So today? you can walk in and get a yoni steam, okay. and you can walk in and do a foot detox. Okay. But if you want to do a Reiki session, massage, or facial, you have to or sound heal session, you would need to book ahead. Gotcha. But um, yeah, you can walk in with the yoni steams and foot detoxes and and then we have yoga classes every Saturday. You can walk in on those. Um, and then we have a lot of other stuff that we do. Like we have full moon ceremonies. Okay. We have a full moon ceremony coming up on the 23rd, I believe. What is that like? Like, um, So basically what I inside, did. right? Yeah. So when I created the Zen Bar, um, a lot of my life started to change when I really started to do my full moon rituals. Like when I really started to connect with nature and I understood the importance of that so when I built the Zen bar I intentionally built that event space in the, in the middle because I knew that I wanted to start teaching others how to do these ceremonies and doing it as a group because when more than one or two gather our you know everything is just amplified um, so I started that so when we first opened the Zen bar I started hosting full moon ceremonies and I basically would just guide people I guide them through what I would do on my own as a group mm -hmm. as a collective so we'll write out our intentions or we'll do our let goals we'll usually incorporate some movement yoga sound bowl session it's like a whole ceremony that we do together as girl I am coming yeah I am coming Period. okay so my next question was going to be like where 
should people start? Because we have given a laundry list. Like, you've given them a prescription, a wellness <laughs> prescription of all I of the know, things. I know. But for someone who's like, girl, I'm a mess, what's step one? Yeah. What would you say step one is? Um, step one, I would say, would be really just starting with your personal development. Like, you're just first doing the shadow work, you know? So... I know we didn't even speak on shadow work, and that's like a whole nother. That probably is a whole nother. First of all, we have probably two or three more whole episodes you're gonna have to do because we didn't even talk about taxes. I know. So we're gonna have to. Seriously, you're gonna have to come back. You're gonna have to come back. (laughs) But I do want you to at least define what is shadow work because I feel like that goes with this conversation. Yeah, it's very important because shadow work is it's the most important part about starting your spiritual journey because. If you don't do the shadow work, you're not going to really take accountability for who you are, you know? Um, a lot of times we go through things in life and we victim blame. We, we stay in victim mode, sorry. We, we're always blaming. It's like, oh, my God, this is what happened to me. Oh, nobody helps me. Oh, my mama left me. And, uh, like, it's a lot of victim uh, mindset. Mm-hmm. I had that mindset for a long time. I went through a lot of things. My mother left me at three years old. I was born a refugee. I came to America, illegal immigrant. Like, you know, I have a lot of things I can complain about. But when I started doing my shadow work, that's when I realized I was complaining a lot. I was always in victim mode. I was always blaming people. And the shadow work really helped me realize that it's nobody's job to save me. It's nobody's job. Like, yes, you have your mom. Yes, you have your dad. You have these people who birthed you. But realistically, before we came to this earth, we already made an agreement to come here for a different mission, for our own mission. So we have to stop being dependent on others, right? So the shadow work is really important for one to just go through our triggers and take responsibility. What does it mean to do shadow work, though? Does it mean I'm going to get a journal and I'm going to write bad things about myself? Does it mean I'm going to look in the mirror? And yes, I'm gonna, <laughs> to an like, extent. So shadow work is really, yes. First, we're going to start with understanding our triggers. What what triggers us? And then we d- dive deeper. Okay, what do these triggers crum- come from? What did they start from? Was it from somebody doing this to me when I was a child? Did somebody say this about me when I was a child? Is there a reason why I get so upset when somebody says it? What is this connected to? Like, what does it connect to? And then we go deeper into figuring out, okay, when that can when that happened to us or this person did this to us or whatever, then it's almost taking... Um, like accepting that that happened, but rewriting our truth, you know? So understanding, okay, this is what might have been told to me, but this isn't my truth anymore. This is what I'm going to choose to not uh, own anymore, almost, right? So now I'm choosing to know, okay, yes, uh, this type of person triggers me, or when somebody says this, this triggers me. So now when I know this, I'm going to make it intentional to, one, not be around somebody who does something like that to me, or making sure that I have a good way to stop myself from being triggered. So that goes back to the meditation, whether I'm doing a 10 breath, 10 count breath work or whatever, learning how to control my triggers, knowing Mm. my triggers so that nobody else can control my triggers. That's really the key. Got it. Yeah. Once you got your triggers, nobody can move you. Because if, like, if anybody else can make you tick, then you're going to be out here living life real hard. Real hard. Everything's going to sway you. Everything. Everything. <sighs> okay, so we, ladies, we got a lot of work to do. <laughs> uh, we need to be meditating, doing the moon rituals. We got to do this shadow work. It's a process, though. It's a process. It's a process. And give yourself grace. This is another thing. that And be easy on yourself while you're trying to do all this shit. Yeah, give yourself grace because we have to remember that we're humans. Even though we're we're spiritual beings and we have all these... Girl, and I didn't even speak about us being co-creators to to the most high, you know? We are powerful beings. So on this journey, understand that, yes, we're born co-creators. Yes, we have all of these powers, but we are still in human form in this realm. So we have to give ourselves grace because we're going to have human triggers that are going to they're just naturally going to happen. And it's okay. It's okay, girl. Focus on our response to them. 
Yes. That's what it comes down to. Exactly. Okay, I need to do some shadow work. That's what it sounds like. I need to do all the things. Okay. It's me. We I'm coming. We but for it. people who are not in Atlanta, though, I'm going to have you tell where they can find the Zen Bar, but what services or how can people connect with you that are not local? Okay, so I have a lot of dope things going on. Um, okay, I have the Zen Bar. Boom. I also have a nonprofit. It's called Travel with a Purpose Retreats. So these are mission-based retreats that um, I do because I believe that traveling is a big part of experience expanding your mind. Um, a lot of times we don't know nothing but what we know. Mm -hmm. So we're so in this bubble that we've never even experienced or understood the type of things that are out here. Like, like if I'm talking to you about Japan, but you've never even heard this word, it's like you can't no even reference. comprehend yeah. it, you know? So um, for me, when I started my travel, it really expanded just my knowledge, my understanding of just life. And um, so I started incorporating that. And I also had started visiting the orphanages um, in like 2017. I had a birthday. And when I was in D Dominican Republic, I had a download and God told me that that I needed to give back to the people. And it was like, I can't just be here and having a good time. And I'm seeing all these people. And I was like, how can I do this? So I went to the orphanage, girl, and it changed my life. It really changed my life. It was the most fulfilled feeling I've ever had in life. Like, just spending the day there with the kids. We didn't even speak the same language. They spoke Spanish. But we just had such an amazing day with each other. I brought, you know, all types of donations, things like that. And um, that's when Travel With A Purpose was birthed. And God gave me the download that every year for my birthday, I wanted to be a blessing to others. Mm. So now I do it annually. It's in November. I do a retreat to a different place. different. So this year we're going to Morocco. So if anybody wants to come to Morocco, the link is in my bio. Um, you can register to apply, and maybe you can join us. Yeah. And then, um, so yeah, travel with a purpose. What else I got? I also, I do taxes. So I've been doing taxes for over 12 years, um, over a decade. Sheesh, I've been doing my, and that helped me a lot, I think, to have the balance with the finance and the spirituality. Because in our communities, especially in the spiritual community, there's a big stigma of being, like, woke and broke mm. you know it I just don't understand it and for me um I know especially doing more of my my spiritual work that my ancestors slept on gold and my ancestors want me to sleep on gold and they do not want me to have the bare minimum that is not that is not the agreement that was made for me but somehow in the realm of consciousness there has been a disconnect with people thinking they're supposed to be this martyr and I don't need anything and all of this stuff but it's like no but if you're abundant everything is yours abundance is your birthright so I can access what I want which equals finance that's that's a part of that too like mm -hmm. That's a part of your personal development is making sure your finances is right. I can't be a good parent, a good leader, a good mother, sister, friend, none of that, none of that without my finances right. So that's a part of doing your spiritual work, I believe, very much. So I do have a community. It's called the Sacred Wealth Tribe. Um, and I help people with getting a little deeper, with understanding mindset, personal mm -hmm. development, spirituality. And then we go deeper into starting your business, um, understanding how to operate in this corporation that we live in, because it is a corporation, it is a business, it's not a country, and the sooner we can understand that, the sooner we can access the wealth that is out here for us. So you're basically reprogramming these women. Absolutely. It's a reprogram program. Absolutely. Okay, you got to look in this camera right here. Tell the people where they can learn more about you because you mentioned the link in your bio several times. So you got to yes. go. You got to tell them what bio they okay, got to go yes. to Boom. and where they can find the Zimbar. All right, so everybody can follow me um, on Instagram at Sacred Secret with two T's official um i'm also you can come to the website sacredwealthtribe.com if you want to learn more about um journeying with me and getting your financial freedom um and you can also just hit the link in my bio on my instagram page to find the youtube video for how to have a spiritual bath um the link to sign up for the travel with a purpose retreats um and i have a lot of other goodies in there i have free things like affirmation lists, um, money mindset things, all types of things in the link in my bio on Instagram. And yeah, come check me out at the Zen Bar. Come pull up on us. Let's have a good time. I'm pulling up for the new moon. Period. Or full moon. One of the moons, I don't we, see. You gonna pull up, don't worry, I'm on you. All the moons. I'm gonna hit you up. Hit me up, seriously, I no. wanna come. Okay. Y'all, 
She'll be back. Don't worry. Don't worry. She will be back. We have so much more to talk about. Right. But start here. Start with your shadow work. That's what I'm about to start doing, figuring out how I can live the best life possible from start to finish. Yeah. Because abundance is what? Our, Our birthright. birthright. Thank y'all so much for tapping in. I'll catch you on the next episode. Peace. So if you made it this far, I just know you loved that episode. Well, what you did not know is that we recorded it right here in ATL at Elevate Studios. Yes, your girl has her own studio, y'all. And it's not just for me. I'm opening it up for you, too. So if you have a podcast, if you are a vlogger, a YouTuber, or a content creator, and you are looking for a professional studio to record your content, or you want to hire me and my team to fully produce your content, make sure you check out the show notes below or log on to elevateagency.com.